Welcome. My name is Warren Clark. I'm the Executive Director of Churches for Middle East Peace. Uh, we are very fortunate today to have two with, with us two very distinguished visitors. Um, uh, His Beatitude um, uh, Bishop Twal, Patriarch of Jerusalem, um, Jordan, and Cyprus, uh, and also um, uh, His Grace uh, Bishop uh, Munib Yunan, the Evangelical Lutheran Bishop of Jordan and the Holy Land. Did I get those titles correct, uh, okay. Your Grace? Yes. Uh, they are here with a group, a very distinguished group uh, from Jerusalem, of uh, leaders of uh, the Jewish, Muslim, and Christian faith uh, to talk to uh, leaders here in Washington about uh, their concerns uh, in Jerusalem, especially the concerns for peace uh, between, uh, between the two uh, communities uh, there. Um, <clears throat> perhaps I can uh, start by asking you briefly uh, something about uh, the organization uh, that you're here with, the Council of the Religious Institutions of the Holy Land. Can you tell us something about uh, uh, that council? Yes, I think you know this council is the was established in 2005, and was established uh, with the two chief rabbis of Israel, the heads of churches of Jerusalem, the Orthodox, Catholic, and Evangelicals, um, as well as uh, the Muslim leadership, uh, the chief judge of the Islamic Court, as well as the minister of. Uh, 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 religious affairs in the Palestine Authority. The idea of this uh, uh, council is how uh, can we build trust among uh, religious leaders uh, um, in the Holy Land, in Palestine and Israel. As well, you see, the idea of it is that uh, religion was always seen to be an, an in, uh, uh, to be an integral part of the problem. We want really to make religion to be an integral part of the, sol of the solution. And of course, uh, we are very much aware that religious leaders um, cannot uh, negotiate for peace and cannot bring peace, but peace in the Middle East cannot come without the religious leaders. And for this reason, we are, we are having three important things uh, in, in addition to, uh, in, uh, to visiting, you know, uh, the American administration here and the State Department. Um, um, first of all, we have been monitoring um, uh, any derogatory remarks by imams, rabbis, and clergy, and we hired, you know, uh, two uh, um, communication companies, one in Ramallah, one in Tel Aviv. And of course, when we read what rabbis, imams, and uh, clergy are saying, we need all to repent because I think sometimes we have to change our language to a language of accepting the other. Secondly, we are monitoring now 700 textbooks. What are they teaching uh, about the other? And thirdly, we are developing a paper on Jerusalem, uh, why, uh, why Jerusalem is dear for the three uh, religions, for Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. What do we agree on Jerusalem, and what do we disagree? So we are coming here to say, please uh, give religious leaders a chance to work for peace based on justice. That sounds, that sounds wonderful. Um, uh, your beatitude. Um, uh, tell us, do you want to add anything to that about the, the council, or can you tell us more about the uh, uh, Christians, the Palestinian Christians who, who live in, uh, in Jerusalem and, and the West Bank? Thank you for this occasion. I start giving our blessing and our best wishes from the Holy Land to our audience, to our public, and uh, we rely on your prayers and your solidarity to help us to resist and to stay in the Holy Land. On the Holy Land, we have very good news and we have bad news. We start with the good news. The presence of the council here in the States is a good sign that we are working, that we will never lose hope, that we trust God. Uh, we are not afraid because the Lord said one day, don't be afraid, I am with you. And if he is with us, we have the right to be afraid. We have the right to lose uh, hope, so we work through our meeting, through our prayers, through our institutions, doing what we can do. From the other side, what is negative in the same time and doesn't help the council is the actual situation that we are living. If we are in conflict since 62 years uh, without finding uh, solution peace means that all the means we used maybe there were wrong or maybe there is no goodwill till now so that's why we have to work on the 
on the man, on the conversion of the heart. We have to go back because we have more walls in the heart of human being besides the wall that we can see separating and the Holy Land and families and so on and so on. So we rely on your help. We invite you to come to the Holy Land to pray with us and for us to pray for the peace. And when I say peace, it's whether it is peace for all the inhabitants of the Holy Land, otherwise we go on in this cycle of violence and we don't want uh, that. When you come from the States as pilgrims to the Holy Land, we are happy. It is a good sign uh, of communion between you and us. It is a good sign that you are concerned about our situation and we want you to be concerned. We want you to be committed for justice and peace in the Holy Land. We don't like really to be alone in our mission, not easy mission in the Holy Land. Uh, for more problems, uh, I say uh, that the Patriarchate as well as his church, we cover Jordan, Palestine and Israel. And one of our problems uh, is the borders. It is not easy to our faithful to cross, to come to the Holy Land. It is painful for us both pastors in the Holy Land to see that a whole generation of Christians uh, is born and raised uh, under uh, occupation and under conflict. Uh, some of them till now they don't know where is the Holy Sepulchre because for these reasons of the conflict till now they were never be allowed to come and to visit. That's why we need peace, we need justice, we need a normal life for us, for our families, for the Jewish families, for the Muslims families, for everybody. Peace and normal life. Till now, this normal life is not guaranteed. Even the work of the council is a little bit handicapped because of the situation. We want dialogue, we want meeting, we want forgiveness, we want, we want. But the actual situation of conflict doesn't help to achieve our goals. Your Beatitude, I think uh, many Americans may be surprised to know that there is a very ancient Christian community in, in Jerusalem and, and in the Holy Land. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the role of uh, the Palestinian Christians uh, with uh, the Greek. Israelis and uh, with the Muslim Palestinians? Nice. Yeah, we are proud to say that we are the first community, first Christian community in the world. And uh, when we were Christians, Europe and some elsewhere, they were still barbar. We, we are the first com Christian community and we are proud to say that because we are your mother church. So when you come, you come to visit your mother church. When you come as pilgrims, you come to see your roots. It is a moral obligation to come and we wait you really, really with a pleasure. We are this small, small uh, 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 community where we are uh, sad to see uh, uh, the effect of the immigration of our people uh, because of the situation for economical, political uh, reasons. If we remember Jerusalem for the moment, maximum we can have nine, ten thousand Christians altogether, Catholic, Orthodox, Evangelical altogether, in a huge mass of Muslims, about 245,000, and biggest a Jewish one, 455,000. We are what the Lord said, the salt of the earth. Mm. We must be convinced about our vocation to be salt of the earth, what the church together are doing, if we can do that, to be a bridge between these people in conflict. I think we have the skills and we have the responsibility to speak with the ones, with the Arabs, we have the same tradition, the same language, the same approach, the same mentality. And with the, with, the, with, the, with the Jews, we have the Bible, we have the Lord, we have the first commandment to love God, to love our neighbors. We cannot, we cannot stop here. Yeah. So I think if the church can do through institutions, through our hospitals, through our schools, through our universities, if we can do this bridge, giving a new education, preparing a new leaders, Christian leaders in the society, we can, we can do our job. So we rely on your help on your prayer, on your solidarity, to empower these institutions in the Holy Land. My last call, please do not leave us alone in this not easy uh, uh, mission. So we rely on you. May the Lord bless you. We, we, now we started our Lent time. 
it is time for sacrifice, for prayer. So one of this goal of our Lent time mm. to think, to pray for the Holy Land, for the peace, peace for every inhabitant of the Holy Land, whether Jews, Muslims, or Christians. Thank you. Uh, Your Grace, you're also president of the Lutheran World Federation, uh, I believe. What can uh, Americans do, what can other people in the world do to try to uh, bring about peace and to try to help the Christians uh, in the Holy Land? Well, I think, you know, it's very important that to understand, first of all, that you have sisters and brothers there who are there representing you, representing the world uh, uh, Christian communion, and who are there really trying to witness for on your behalf, to witness in a in a pluralistic, you know, society with Muslims and with the with the, with the Jews, and even with secular and others. I think you know what you can help us in addition to the prayers that we need very much. I think it's very essential to work with us, not around us, not to speak about us, but to work with us. Right. And you know to to support you know uh, our people and us in in, in, in our work. Uh, Sometimes the tendency that people are interested in interest groups, but not in the church. You know, we maybe are less than 2% of the total population. Our impact in the society is 25%. And although, you know, with our own institution. This is the reason. If you want to help us, there are four ways. First of all, strengthen the Christian institutions. Don't let it suffer, you see, from deficits and so on. Help us to be sustainable help us to continue our work, our witness, because the Christian institutions are the ones that have a theology to serve every human being, regardless of religion, uh, race, uh, political or, or religious affiliation, and I think, or gender. I think these, is, and if they, are, if they are strong, then the Christian community is strong and you are strong. If they are weakened, we are all are weakened, you see. My, um, our direct mission are these institutions. Secondly, help us in community-based education. Education in the Middle East is the only transformative power. All of us grew, you know, even as clergy, through the educational system. Education is from the womb to the tomb. We have to be educated. And then thirdly, help us in, uh, uh, help our people in order that we can find ways and means to let them stay in the country and find jobs through microcredits, through financing, to whatever it is. Maybe we have to make ecumenical bank, you see, there that serves the, only the Christians in the Holy Land, you see. Fourthly, I, I, I would say housing. Imagine the world, uh, the Christianity is nearly, how, how many, more than one and a half billion in the world. Imagine that everyone pays one dollar per year. How many houses you will build that Christians will be steadfast and stay in the country? If we are serious to help us, you see, on this thing, uh, you know, we will really continue in a sustainable way our, our mission. We hate to see our work is weakening. We want to see it is strong. Because after all, the, the Christians, in the Middle Arab Christianity in the Middle East are the guarantee of a modern civil society that promotes human rights, including women's rights, freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and, uh, and freedom of the, uh, of the rights of the minorities. We have a mission, and that mission is really to help our people, not ourselves. This is the reason I, I ask you to pray for us and at the same time to support the work we are doing and please come and see us see our work get involved in our in our in our in, in our work and uh, and uh, and come to the United States and advocate what we are doing for building peace in the area and I'm sure most churches in the United States have agencies, have 
uh, bodies that are able to uh, channel uh, donations and support to various kinds to uh, to the various churches in uh, in the Holy Land. We hope. We hope. We hope. So. We hope. And we, we hope pray. And we support you. Thank, thank, thank you both very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.